essentially the part of his case that helped them justify the two life sentences was saying that he uh, solicited murders. No, it wasn't the case in the case. Uh, it, it, it was somehow a part of. It was, it was OK. He was indicted in Maryland for that. It was based on the material provided by a corrupt agent who, is, who has been in prison for the last six years. I believe he just was released. Um, so, hey, you know, who had, uh, you know, who supposedly had this conversation with an, an anonymous chat with supposedly Dread Pirate Roberts. No proof it was Ross whatsoever. Anyway, that was submitted to Maryland. That has now been dismissed with prejudice. It never went to trial. It was never prosecuted because there were two cases. Then there was in New York where he was, did go to trial. That was never um, charged. The jury never ruled on it and it was never part of his convictions. He was not convicted of anything to do with violence whatsoever or murder for hire or planning any violence. So this was something that um, the prosecutors talked about that they indicted in Maryland and dropped. And of course the media you know, picked up on it and it's become part of the story, but um, there's no proof of that. Who is and the agent? Uh, who, who is the agent that you said is, is in prison now? Well, I think he might've just been let, let out, but um, Carl Mark Force is his name. And this is all covered in that same thing, the Silk Road, the tr uh, real and untold story that's on our site, but um, uh, in detail, footnoted. But um, yeah, Karl Mark Force. There's another corrupt agent who also had run of the site. They had full reign of the site. They could act like Dread Pirate Roberts. They could um, change chats. They changed evidence, it, potentially. Uh, and um, his name is Sean Bridges, and I believe he is still in prison. I'm pretty sure. So these two agents, and the real kicker about these agents is that they were not allowed to be known to the jury. So when our, when Ross's lawyers were like, we're going to tell the jury that there are these two agents, they could change stuff on the site, they could act as Dread Pirate Roberts, the judge shot it down. She would not allow the agents to be known to the jury. So we, I didn't even know about them until two months later when it all came out in the news. But by then Ross had been convicted. It was too late. Do you still have any contact with his attorney? Uh, his trial attorney, no. Trial attorney. His name was Josh, right? Austray tell. Mm -hmm. No. And he was also the attorney for the appeal, but no, I don't. Mm -hmm. Now, was he court appointed or did uh, Ross no, hire him? Hired him? He was highly recommended and we hired him. Mm -hmm. And what is his take on all of this? What, what is his? I, I, I don't know. I mean, he's, he, yeah, oh no, he, what he thinks Ross, I mean, obviously he fought for Ross. He thought he should be, should be released. Mm -hmm. His thing was that Ross, um, that was set up and that someone else was doing this. That he wasn't, that he, you know, started the site, yes. And, and that's all, again, in, in that um, piece on the, on the, pay, on the uh, website. So he, you know, yeah, he, I mean, yeah, he's his defense attorney. He felt like it was, it was you know, he was railroaded. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing now with, uh, with your website, freeross.org? And uh, just give me an example of, of uh, kind of like what is your mission now and, and what are you doing with with the website trying to inform people and uh and be active and outspoken about what's going on well one of the main things on our website is a petition that um please anyone listening if you haven't signed it please go to freeross.org and sign the petition there's a big red banner or you can go to freeross.org slash petition and it'll go right to change.org where the, where the where it is and it's uh approaching 360,000 people signed it. Um, I haven't been on it lately, but I'm, you know, it's, if it's not there, it's close. Um, people, uh, you know, hundreds, you know, way over a quarter of a million people think that Ross should be, his sentence should be commuted. Um, I have personally, you know, done a lot of interviews on media as well as attended many conferences over the years, just spreading the word, correcting the narrative, um, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, promoting, raising funds. That's always an issue because lawyers are very expensive people, but, you know, and doing that and just in general, um, keeping this alive. I, I feared that Ross would be forgotten. You know, he's 
he's buried alive over there in the a metal box, essentially, and it's easy to forget. There's a lot going on in the world right now. And so a lot of my intention is to keep people, you know, keep, not, not let him be forgotten. You know, once he's out, if you want to forget him, fine. <laughs> but, you know, it's like not, not forget him. And all the other people, I mean, he's, he's not unique in having a terrible sentence and a, a really unjust, cruel sentence. There's thousands and thousands of people that are, I mean, I, I believe there's 150 people with um, life sentences for marijuana. Well, I, I know that Ron of Ross's friends in Florence, the, the place he was before this, um, is, the, is serving a life sentence for marijuana. And um, it's in Colorado where on the state level, marijuana is legal and the guy's serving life. It, it's just, it's insane. <laughs> just insane. So yeah. mm -hmm. it's not insane. violent guy serving life for marijuana in Colorado. Yeah. Does Ross talk, talk about what he wants to do if he ever has the chance to be a free man again? Did he ever talk about what he would do or what sort mm -hmm. of aspirations he has? Well, he said he will work for criminal justice reform because he's seen firsthand, of course, for over seven years now, that how much reform is needed. And he knows the people personally. And, um, you know, so he said he would definitely work for that. Um, I imagine... It, since he's doing work in prison about different ways that he can help people through his knowledge of technology that'll continue to do that. Um, like what, you know, like the paper I was telling you about. He's got, he's full of ideas, you know, but I would say that it's, he's still a very much of a freedom loving person. He believes in that. And um, so I would imagine that would be as it continued to be his inspiration. But it, but but all legal, all legal. He seems like <laughs> he such... will never come near breaking the law again. <laughs> no, I mean he seems like like someone who could be such an asset to society. I agree. And to the country, I mean, someone that young, that creative. I mean, yes. he has the potential to inspire so many people to to make the world a better place mm -hmm. with with what he can do with his with his skill, with his talent, with his knowledge. It's just, it's such a shame that this brutal system that put him away for so long, it's just such a shame. And it's so depressing to think that people still, they, the system still works like this to this very day. And there's so many people that are just going to waste away and have given up on ever getting, on ever getting out. Yeah. I mean, people, victimless crimes, quote unquote. Where, where this was, you know, no one was forced, no one was hurt, no one, this is not right. You should, you don't, you don't do life for that. You know, it's, it's, yeah, our country, our country's criminal justice system has been weaponized against people. And it's very alarming, really, when you think about it. It's very, very concerning. And it's become this mass incarceration that is huge money, giant money. All kinds of people are making money off of it, both privately and and government is, and um, it's but the taxpayers are funding this thing, and it's it's billions of dollars. So it it's just it's horrible.